A year and a half ago, when the Syrian refugee crisis was at its peak, I was invited to go to uh, Lebanon, to Greece and to the Balkans by World Vision, and I asked my dear friend Ben Quilty to come with me. I've been visiting refugee camps here in the Becca Valley, Lebanon, with Ben Quilty. It's um, the middle of winter, there's a blizzard coming in. Uh, we've seen things the last few days that would turn a heart of stone to gravel. Ben and I each in our own ways have done different things about the refugees, but Ben's done quite an extraordinary thing, made this extraordinary effort to collect from around the world uh, these pictures by Syrian children, refugees, and uh, collate them into this book, which I find a remarkable document, not just about the Syrian war, but about our times. I guess that's the thing of getting two creatives together to try and come up with an idea of how to hatch a plan to do something about it. I mean, you came back and wrote, you could get it out instantly. I couldn't do that. I couldn't make paintings about it for some reason. As, a, as an artist, I'm looking to experience the world. I hadn't counted on the absolute horror of what these people collectively and particularly these children have all been through. I know it changed my life and I know yours too, Flan. You can't not look through this book now as a, a memory of all of these children. And this is only one tiny portion that I edited and tried to edit on the basis of the quality of the drawings and treat them like artists. We gave them the materials that I would use. We documented them the way my art would be documented. And we gave them the treatment that an artist would expect of their work. When we first started looking at the pictures, I remember Ben was, we, we didn't understand them, we didn't appreciate the detail in them, and the, they are very much children's drawings, they're very simple. But in Heber's drawing, there's actually a helicopter gunship. We, we didn't recognise it at the beginning. And then it was pointed out to us what it was, and it's actually very much like a helicopter gunship. And when you start looking at these pictures in detail, you see the, the, the horror, the sadness, uh, the beauty they've lost and what's important to them. There's one that's got just bands of wild colour and it's got, uh, this is Syria because now Syria is nothing. Blue is happiness. In the middle there's this, the line right in the middle is this thin blue band. It's got blue is happiness, that's where I hope to live. They're drawings that are worth spending time looking at in detail. The way empathy and compassion seem to, seems to be sliding out of our community at the moment is driven by the politics of making up stories to win an argument rather than telling the truth. And every single child draws the truth. They draw from the heart and they draw the way they feel and every single one of them that we asked to be a part of this project knew that we were going to give them the opportunity of telling their story to the whole world. And when you tell a little seven-year-old or an eight-year-old that, you see them pick up that pencil and you see them draw and you see them have massive stories to tell. In a, in a strange way, it's journalism at its best. And this is just experience without ideology, without prejudice. There's one picture which, to me, was like a, a novel, and it, it, the, the title of it is The Most Miserable Day of My Life, Our Neighbours Attacked My Father With Guns In Their Hand, and that's the drawing. And you don't need to know what side his father was on or not on to understand the immense dimensions of that tragedy. So I found that for, for all the technology we have now, Somehow these children's drawings took me much more powerfully into the heart of the experience than almost anything else I'd read or seen. And it seemed to, to me that it cuts through so much of the way we relate to people who aren't here and they build empathy. They build people's ability to feel for these people. My, my hope is that people understand these things are not separate from us. And if we allow ourselves to wall ourselves off from these experiences, we will in the end go to a terrible place ourselves. 
we have to acknowledge them and in acknowledging them we must do something to, to help these people.